Hello everybody, this is your favorite cousin, Cousin Cornbread from Sex Travel Sports Food Podcast. Word. And this young lady is Alicia Haskett of the O Experience Boudoir Photography as shown on her t-shirt. On episode number 18, you can hear us talking about sex versus intimacy and how those things are portrayed through boudoir photography. Is that right? No? I mean, it, it sounds that right. Okay. So I guess so, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's cornbread. Hey, man, y'all welcome back to Sex Travel Sports Food. It's your favorite cousin, cornbread, on the mic as your host. And uh, this episode, I have another Crash the Episode podcast. I'm sorry, Crash the Podcast episode with my newfound. BFF, <laughs> Miss Olicia, uh, who you can do it. You what? can say it. I'm, I'm gonna wait for you to try. Oh, wait for me to try. Yeah. Oh, the what? Go ahead. Bourgeois. Oh, you did. Oh, there we okay, go. You got it. So we got it. We got our special guest of the of the episode. Uh, well, you know, I try to bring in all the experts when I can, and uh, Miss Olicia who's over there on the mic and has been talking the most amount of ish since she got to the studio. She done judged everything from the studio <laughs> decor to my t-shirt to just everything. She's just been talking a whole bunch of ish. And I, I got, I gave her, she got wine over here. Uh, you know, we got some snacks and she's just over here just talking shit and I don't understand. But, we got Miss Olicia, and she'll introduce herself because she has a company where she shoots boudoir yes. photography. Yes. And uh, I wanted to bring her on so we could talk about the relationship between something like that, which most people would look at as a sensual, sexual type thing, mm -hmm. and do a contrast, compare and contrast between what's sexual and what's sensual. And what else do we say? Um, the difference between sex and intimacy. The difference between sex and intimacy. There we go. Yes. All right, so I'm going to let you go ahead and give your own intro of yourself because you're a very good speaker. Thank you. That sounded like shade, though, but thank no, you. No, you are. Okay. That's one of the reasons. I don't know, know what you, like, I, I don't know. No, that's one of the reasons. I went ahead, you know, that's why, you know, okay. that's why I messed with you. All right, I was you know? just checking. Because when we met, we had a great conversation about a whole bunch of different topics. We did. And, um, you know, that's why I was late for all the rest of the stuff I had to do that day because we had a whole bunch of <laughs> conversations going on. I just had to get the fuck out of there eventually because I was running late. But anyway, I'm going to let you, oh, and you're, you know, in your profession, yeah. I'm assuming you need to be able to present and communicate well. Very but we well. ain't going to talk about your real yeah, profession unless you that. want to. I mean, if it comes up, it comes up. Okay. It's not, I don't hide it, so it's fine. Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to let Miss Alicia give her description of her boudoir photography firm, mm -hmm. let y'all know what she do, and then we're going to get straight into the, the what you call it, the substantive discussion, and that you're going to lead, by the way, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to let you lead it, you know what I'm saying, because you, you got a lot of ish to talk, so I'm assuming you got a lot of good stuff to I talk I have a lot to. of facts. A lot of facts. Facts. Facts, okay. Facts. All right. So go ahead, Miss Alicia, it's, it's on you. Let's okay, hear. so my name is Alicia Haskett, and what I do is I empower women to define their sexy, and I do that with uh, boudoir photography. So boudoir photography is a style of photography that, like you said, is essential. Um, women come in, they do lingerie, they can do nude. It just depends on what they want to do to show their sexual side, their sensual side. Okay. And that's it. Now do... Do you reach out to them to mm -hmm. do it? Or how does how did you acquire, <laughs> acquire. The, the models or the are they considered models? Like are you doing this for professional models or are you doing it for individuals who want it for their own personal collection or for their partner or mm -hmm. for themselves or like what's the, the what's the, the the mix and the dynamic? Like how do you go about that? Well I have a group. I have a group online that is a VIP group. Um, which has about maybe 1,500 women. 
and some hundred yes okay. and some of them uh, are women who I shot before some of them are women who have been added into the group mm -hmm. um, and it, it's not just about boudoir so with the women who come to me what they're looking for um, a lot of my clients are older and so they are looking for a way to feel sexy again um, okay. Because if you think about it, when you get pictures done, usually, for, especially for women, we get pictures done. When we're children, we get pictures done for prom, we get pictures done uh, for wedding, and then family portraits. So it's never about them. It's always about someone else mm. or someone else within their pictures. Okay. So this is a way for them to, you know, identify with themselves again. So a lot of my clients do that. Or wedding sometime if the bride wants to have her groom i just did a couple well not a couple i just did a bride and um she actually sent me the video of herself showing her husband, showing husband. her book and he was like oh shit okay turn the video off so <laughs> it, you know he said i'm about to get it in. yes oh, it's and so it's one of those things where it's it's a way for like the session itself is for the woman it's for her it's not for her partner, because it could be, you know, a woman is married to a woman or whatever, but it's not for the partner. It's an investment in her, and okay. that's it. If she decides to do merchandise, which a lot of my clients do, then that is when it comes in what their partner would like. But the session itself is an investment in her. Hmm. And so I saw you, I, I watched one of your... My live Your videos. live. Yes. And you were really... Um, Hands-on. <laughs> you were really hands-on, and you were really, what is the word? You were very encouraging. Yes. And yes. directing, because I'm a, I assume that girl hadn't done this before. And so you were giving yeah. her the instructions. So I thought that was good that you just were just like, all right, well. Just put your leg you up and put it over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. And you were like, uh, what do you call it? You were showing her how to do it. Yeah. All that good stuff. So I thought that was really cool. And... I saw that you were, you were like talking her through it. Like, mm -hmm. this is how it's going to turn out at the end. This is why you're doing this. Like, you know, and she was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And, and when you showed her the picture, she was like, oh, I look good. Like, she, I'm popping out this bit. Yes. I mean, so, it's important because if you think about it, when women define their sex, especially for black women, it's mm -hmm. usually in a negative way. Like, it's a negative way. Usually that's what it is. And so when I tell her, like, I usually do the poses first. So I'll say, you know, I want you to stand like this. And then when you put your hand here, and then I want you, like, I tell them how to breathe. And that's what in the, in that video, you, you sort of saw it, but it wasn't like I was in the off to the side, but telling her how to inhale, how to exhale. So when I take the picture, you can see like your mouth is open. It's not just you looking like you just got out of jail when you right. want to take a pose. <laughs> like, that's what I don't want. So, and you have to break people of that because people automatically assume that being sexy, well, women automatically assume that being sexy is, um, like, a scold. And I'm like, no, like, you should smile. If you smile, then smile. Like, sexy smile, is right. joy. Sexy is laughter. Sexy doesn't have to be you just standing there staring at me in the face because that's not sexy. Hmm. So, that's, for me, that's what it is. Now, do you do, do you tell them to smize, like Tyra Banks used to do on, I used to watch that jump because I was in love with Tyra Banks. <laughs> well, I, actually, I'm not going to say was, I am in love with Tyra yes. Um She's beautiful. She's, she's awesome, beautiful. right? But like when I was in high school and all mm -hmm. that, you couldn't tell me nothing. I had all the swimsuit issues, uh, posted like a straight, straight bound. Okay. But, uh, you know, she do the smize thing, what is the smile with Smile with your eyes, right? yes. That's hard to do. Like, it really is hard to do. It, it definitely is. And if you aren't practicing, like, for me, like, I'll take you through what it is. So when the experience, we, I call it experience because my name is O Experience. But we start from me getting to know you. Like, who are you? First of all, I need to know if I can work with you because I've turned people away. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, because, I mean. You highly selective, like uh, Harvard. Yeah. That's what I would say. That's, that's what I tell people. I'm highly selective. Yeah, because if. It's a it's, it's an investment in yourself, but it's also um, it has to be a level of intimacy because it's a very intimate thing. Like I'm seeing them, you know, with their perceived flaws, whatever they think they are, and I need to be able to express to them one that they're beautiful, two that I'm gonna put you in this position, and I know it looks crazy as shit, 
But when you see the end result, you're going to understand why I had you in this position. So I right. need them to trust me. Right. And if they don't trust that I'm going to have them in a position to look beautiful, look sexy, then it's not going to work. Like, it's, it's just not. It's going to be a waste of time and a waste of their money. And that's not what I want. Hmm. Now, how did you end up getting into the boudoir photography in particular? Did you do photography in a different format before? Or was photography your first artistic situation? Or are you like artsy fancy all over oh. the place? <laughs> and you just do art all over the place and it's just one of your many artsy talents. No, I can't. Photography talents. I cannot draw. <laughs> I cannot paint. Um, I actually have a Bachelor's of Fine Arts in photography and computer imagery. So oh, that's fine. Oh, you real, you real live, like real, <laughs> real deal fancy. So yes, I have a degree in photography okay. and in business. I have a master's in business administration. So stunt on them. Stunt. Oh shit! Stunt I did. Hey, out the, the gym, hell? Just dash just my out. shoulders off. Out shit. The gym. So I mean, and for that, I did do weddings. I did um, start with weddings because my mother was like, "You got this degree, like, what you doing? Right. Like, what you gonna do with it?" Because right. 2007 crash happened everything happened when I graduated so mm -hmm. I did weddings and they are a lot I'll leave that like that they are a whole lot and a lot of work it's a lot of work it's a lot of mental work as well um, on the back end it's a lot of work but it was one of those things that I'm glad I did because you have to deal with a lot of people mm -hmm. that you might not want to deal with and you cannot you know you have to be courteous even though you want to be like get the fuck out of my face <laughs> I don't know who you are, and right, you talk right. about taking a picture of Aunt Mamie or something like. So it's a lot. Yeah, you gotta get Aunt Mamie in there. Like you gotta take you pictures gotta of people. Gotta get Aunt Mamie. And then you know, then smartphones and trying to fight people getting their picture. It was too much. So I was just like, you know what? Um, I moved into doing like family portraiture and lifestyle sessions and things like that. And then I realized that I wanted to do something else. Like I went through a transition in my life. So around like two years ago, so I was like, I want to do something that I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. And so boudoir was one of those things that I knew that I was good at and I wanted to explore it. Although I will say I had people who were like, you know, you can't just do that. Like you have to do other things mm -hmm. and because you're not going to make any money. You're not going to, you know, um, get clients. And it wasn't that they didn't believe in me. It was just they wanted me to be able to support myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, yeah, but this is what I want to do. So right, right. I'm just going to do it. You got to pursue your passion, yeah. I believe. You know, I, Sometimes I know I've been telling people recently, I'm like, I don't waste my first, I'm 38. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I don't waste my first 38 years well, no. with a whole bunch of what I was quote unquote supposed to do. Uh-huh. Right, like you know, they got you get people. It's, it's like this this phony ass playbook. Yes. That a lot of people are set out for you. You know, graduate high school, go to college, mm -hmm. get a degree, and then basically go work your life away. Yeah. As a uh, as a working stiff. As a working. <laughs> but right? that's you're going to get, you up, you're going to get in the rat race and all this stuff, right? But mm -hmm. you know, as you get as you go along, and you realize the rat race is just that. Yes. It's, def it's definitely the hamster on the spinning wheel. It is. And you be like, yo. Now, if that's what you do and it make you happy, bet. If you love being yeah. a CPA or whatever, the fuck, hey, live your best life. Of course. But if it's something like art or whatever it is that mm -hmm. you're doing, that you or that you do that makes you happy when you're doing it, and like mm -hmm. you basically don't get tired of doing it, that's what you post, or that's what you need to incorporate. Now, I'm a person that's realistic. I'm like, look. You can't always just dump off and be like, yo, I'm only going to pursue my passion. Yes, that's because true. Because in real life, you need money. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and a lot of, uh, sometimes your, your passion might not be bringing in the money that you need or yes. money at all. True. Right? So, true. you know, so I'm like, you know, make sure you get it in some kind of way. You know, like, I'm a, cre I like, I'm a creative person. Mm -hmm. I do this podcast. I mean, we talked about bands earlier. Yeah. You hate, she hates go-go, apparently. I did not see. Now and you about to get people from, sending me from, messages. So, I'm from D.C., and we got go-go. And she's from Baltimore. Yes. Right? Charm so City. 40 minutes, 45 minutes away. Charm I never understood why they said Charm City. Ain't no charm in Baltimore. I ne every time I go to Baltimore, I never brought them call them and like, you know what? You know what? <laughs> this is very charming. <laughs> you know what? North North Ave 
is very charming. <laughs> don't do that. Don't don't the five do that. season is very charming. Drew Hill Park is it's charming. Very charming. It is very charming. <laughs> you got the zoo right there. Girl, look at your style. But yeah, so <laughs> Yeah, I think if people need to, you know, I think it's very important to do that. So that's good. So that's so you so you decided that the boudoir was your thing that you want to do. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was important because it was a passion for me. Like, it is not just boudoir. It's mm-hmm. about making a woman feel confidence within herself. Because a lot of my like, I've had clients that have called me crying, hysterical before they come into me the day of because uh, they're like I can't do that this nervous yeah and huh? I'm like no you can you paid this money first of all <laughs> first of all yeah first of all let me no let, let's be real <laughs> you paid this money ain't no refund though but even with with that like you this is something that you want to do like we've had conversations like I've talked to you we've had conversations you've expressed that this is something that you wanted to do I want you to be able to do it and to come in and to do it. So, mm-hmm. like, let's do it. Like, right. we're here. I'm here for you. Um, my makeup artist, who's amazing, Danisha Felder, um, we, you know, we play off each other. So she's there with me, and we always are able to calm the person down and make sure that mm-hmm. they know that, you know, we're going to look silly before you look silly. Mm-hmm. So just come in, have a good time, and in the process, take amazing, amazing all best pictures. pictures. Yeah. Now, your makeup artist, now, do you have anybody else on set besides yourself and the makeup artist? Are there any other people involved? No, just okay. us. Now, if they decide to bring someone, which I always say don't, um, unless if I have a maternity, like, shoot, mm-hmm. then I sometimes I will just say, depending on how far along they are, mm-hmm. I'll say if you want to bring somebody, you know, they can come. Mm-hmm. But they have to stay in the makeup room. Like, they can't come out when I'm shooting. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing. If they bring somebody, I mean... They just have to stay in the room. That's it. Got it. Got it. Now, do you always... So, your makeup artist, what's, what's yeah. her name again? Danisha. Danisha. Now, does she have a stage name? <laughs> no! <laughs> she does not have a stage Her nickname is Di. Oh, I'm okay. going to tell her that. Now, she, she, so, earlier, before we got on, before we started recording, mm-hmm. I asked Miss Alicia. Mm-hmm. I said, hey, do you have... I couldn't think of... It, it's an like alias, I guess, or like a... I, re, I you know I'm, I would I used to be I used to rap and host comedy shows and all this stuff so I was thinking the first thing that came to my mind was stage name. <laughs> so Miss Olicia talking about now nah, I got no stage name. What you mean stage name? You deal with them strippers. And man, first I'm of like, all, first of all, I'm like first of all, what do I got to do with strippers? I mean, it's, it's so many people that work on stages besides strippers. But who's but when you think of you say it, a woman and no shade to strippers. No shade. No shade they get to that strippers. Mu- first of all, they do get, they get that, that money. money. Don't let me get ever that get, money. Don't let me ever get no abs, cause I be stripping right now. <laughs> First of all, it's not just about abs. Like the men are a totally different breed oh, when really? it comes to stripping. Know. I just feel like I need abs before I go. No, I'm telling you, you don't. As long as you can pick up women, oh, flip that. them over, uh-huh. and do all that. Like the women, if you well, I don't know if you've been to a male like they. A male I, review. I don't even. Call, I think the male review is kind of like the. Chipping the Australia shit. down under that <laughs> shit that they have, like that's <laughs> that. I'm talking about like the ghetto Temple Night Hills. Up. Can't bring your phone in, and this actually happened. We I went right. to one for my girlfriend. You couldn't right. bring your phone in. Yeah, you can't bring nothing. You couldn't bring shit in. Nah. And it's chairs lined in a circle, yeah. and it's just that's it. Like girls <laughs> everywhere, and I was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, what does she have on? Is she a part of the show? Mm. So that, like, that's what they want. And you got a beard, so you would make money. <laughs> is that, is that, first of all, ain't nobody never gave me no kind of money. <laughs> they they were have it like, yo, your beard popping, here comes the money. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that would happen, though. Because apparently I'm the only person. There's it, a couple of things I've been where it became like the, the fly trend to do some shit. Like, mm-hmm. I've always had a beard. Oh, for years I've had a beard. I've had a okay. beard since I was. So you were a trendsetter. Well, I've been had a beard since I was 17 years old. Okay. Now, I've gone between beards mm-hmm. and goatees, right? I've okay. gone between those two for years, right? But, you know, recently over the past few years, this mm-hmm. beard thing has been a big deal. Well, because it's like the ugly man's makeup. Well, that's what they say. Yeah. And I thought I was still cute. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I thought I was still cute without the beard. You are, but, but yeah. 
Well, I don't know about before. I gotta see pictures because you know sometimes people say that and then you look like what's that? What's that man named Harding? Is that him? The oh, basketball uh, player? Uh, the one that dated one James day? James Harden. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needed that. <laughs> it was, it's bad. Yeah. Hey, look. You know, I, uh, but I just don't get it, man. I don't know. But I, I ain't never got no money. I ain't never got no chicks off and having a beard. But you have you it's tried, like I have, though? Like, I, have, I ride motorcycles, right? Okay. Everybody's always like, oh, you must get all the bitches. Like, yeah. No. I mean, but you got to. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll put out. A lot of people tell me I'll put out the proper energy. Could like, be. Yeah, because I, I don't like no fuck shit. So. I mean, well, that is that is a big deal. Like, energy. I'm all about energy and all stuff. That's, that is true. Because whatever you attract, you're going to attract. So if you attract <laughs> fuck shit, you, A. Right. That's if you attract fuck shit. Yeah, that's why, you know. You that's probably why I'm you know. Yeah, I don't, got, I don't be having nobody pussy popping on the back of my bike, grabbing my beard. <laughs> I don't got time for it. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. <laughs> but yeah, so, so what are we talking about? I don't even know because that was went off left field. <laughs> so look, so we got so you you decide to focus on the bourgeois. You said yes. hey, look, it's not I just call it no bourgeois. I just I told that you it was going to Hey, it sound legit. It sounds fancy. To who? I, I can put my pinky out. Bourgeois. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, all right, go uh, ahead with that fake ghetto bougie. <laughs> go ahead. I'll be there. I'll all right, go, go ahead. I'm First not going to First of all, everybody you. should be bougie, whatever the fuck bougie is. You always want better but, for yourself. That's what I believe. I don't understand. All right, I know I'm going off topic, but I, I don't mean. understand. Like, when I was growing up, uh-huh. if you said somebody was bougie, uh-huh. that was not, like, something to be proud of. Right. But now, like, niggas are saying they bougie, and mm-hmm. I'm just like, where? Like, where? Well, yeah. But see, I, I always told people, if, if bougie means I aspire for better, then I'll be that. And I think everybody should. But the stuff, but the people who saying they bougie look ratchet. <laughs> like. <laughs> maybe, they don't, maybe they don't know how to dress bougie. I mean, but I don't, for me, I don't even think it's dress. I think it's a sense of. How they carry themselves. How they carry themselves. Sense of entitlement. Like, yeah. I was. That's what what was said about me and my sisters. Like we thought we were bougie. Yeah, I was bougie. Well, shit, yeah. So hold on. So do you? So you got some wine right here. Do yes. you drink? Do you put your pinky out? You no, drink? I don't put my pinky out to okay. drink wine. I just want to make sure. That's when you drink say, tea. Tea. Now you know what's funny, right? <laughs> what? Is I looked it up because I'm a dork. Why? Because you look up information. Yeah, because I like to know. Like they call them useless facts. I call them fun facts. Okay. Right. So apparently. Putting your pinky out mm-hmm. during anything formal mm-hmm. is a hell no. So okay. it's actually a, a sign of whatever the hell the opposite you special. is. Rat, quote unquote ratchet. Okay. Which is a word I, I really hate, but I started using it because nobody's going to stop it. Because <laughs> it's really wretched, right? Yes. A ratchet is a, a mechanics tool. It is. You know, but so if you watch that. the old westerns and stuff, they mm-hmm. do use it. I know that. But they ratchet. Use, they say ratchet. Do they? They yeah. say wretched or ratchet? Ratchet. I've heard it. My dad watches westerns, and sometimes I had to sit there and watch it. So, <laughs> so they <laughs> shout out to my dad. <laughs> they kick in. They kick in the saloon door and be like, "All right now." <laughs> they do. I've ratchets. heard it. I swear, I've heard it. Okay, I get. But it. you are right. But uh, yeah, girl, it drives me crazy. I don't know. But anyway, everybody should be bougie. I, I mean, or at least aspire for better. If somebody make you feel bad for wanting better, then fuck them. I always say that That's too. I, I say like I have a girl at my job who says that you think you better than me. And every time she says, it, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, you I said should, it, and I'm saying yes, yeah. I, I do believe I'm better. <laughs> I don't even say that. I just say yeah. yeah, and then we just stand staring at each other. I'm like, I see you later. <laughs> then y'all have a stare off. I don't got time for that. Yes, <laughs> like yeah. I'm playing with her, but I mean, That's if someone funny. wants to say that, I'm like yes. Hey, 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 you're damn right. I don't care. Like, if you, I feel like, especially in the group that I have, um, every morning at like six o'clock in the morning, I always put affirmations in. So I always tell them, you know, tell them they're beautiful. Tell it doesn't matter what it is. Whatever I find is what I put up in the group. And for me, a big thing is self care. Like okay. self care is huge because, especially for women, especially for Black women, like self care is something that is just missing in what black women do because we are always supposed to be strong. We're always supposed to be, which I don't, I don't, I hate when people say that, like strong black women. I don't believe in that. Yeah, I don't like that term. I don't like it either. I like resilient 
Like to me, that's something that you can say, you know, you've gone through A, B, C, but you came out on the other side. So to me, that makes more sense than saying strong. Got it. But I agree with that. That's something Words that I promote. Important. Yeah, like that's something I promote in my group so they understand like it's not just about, you know, what I shoot, but it's about you living your best life. Like I want them to live their best life. Right. That's important for me. Right. Nah, that's good. So when so when you're getting these phone calls mm-hmm. the night before, yes. on the way over there, yes. and they wilding out. Yeah. Do you have an example of like something crazy that you had to say? Or some uh, some way you had to flip something to to make them feel comfortable to go through it? Do you have any examples that you can think of? I know that's on the spot, but it is on the spot. Um I have had I had people who've been in the studio like flipping, but I have had um, clients, and I have to. That's when you gotta put your like your your G voice on and be like, <laughs> I need you to like. I don't say man up. I'm like I need you to woman up. Like I need you to you know we gonna do this shit. We doing it together. Like right. get your shit together. Right. Depends on what my relationship is with the person. And do you clap them out? Do you be like, look, <laughs> yeah, no, no, you have paid for this motherfucking shoot. And you're going to do it. Yes. I mean, you have to do right. what you have to do because it's not just about the money. Like, I want them to come in to experience what it's like to be pampered. Like, experience what it's like to come in. Hmm. You don't have to worry about anybody but yourself. Right. Like, I don't do hair. That's the only thing I don't do because black women in hair, I'm not <laughs> fighting that fight. So, that's the only thing I don't do. Okay. But, you know, when with the makeup, I have wardrobe. So, they don't have to bring anything. They just hmm. bring themselves. Okay. And that's. That's literally it. And shoes. Bring themselves in shoes. And their hair done. done. And that's it. So you don't have to worry about anything. Like, I tell you how to pose. Um, I even tell them, I even tell Di, like, she'll ask me, you know, what are we doing for makeup? I tell, like, based on the conversations I've had with them, I'll say, you know, well, we want a glam look. We want a natural look. So they don't have to think about anything. Now, have you ever had any, uh, you got to die, and mm-hmm. y'all got the look that y'all want to do. Mm-hmm. Now, have you ever had anybody show up that was, like, beyond repair? Well, no! <laughs> <laughs> How can you say that? I don't know. Like, 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 have you ever been in a situation where you were, like, mm-hmm, 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 No, mm-hmm, because. You were, like, scratching the back of your ear, like, I don't, I don't no. know. This no. Oh, oh, I can't. We'll talk about that offline, because I can't say well, that, because yeah, she would know who I'm talking keep, about. Keep your uh, client, attorney, pri- or your client. Photographer privilege. I, I'll tell you a story, but I can't say it, right? Because <laughs> it, it, it threw me for a loop. Like, I had to stop and be like, oh, all right. Um, Run right back. Let's do the next thing. <laughs> but I will tell you about that, but I can't do it because right that would be bad. Yes. Okay. So I have had. But no, because I feel like every woman is beautiful. Okay. And because beauty, like I say, beauty is, is in the eye of the beholder. Um, I think everyone is beautiful. Now, your attitude can be shitty, Mm -hmm. and that makes you ugly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I believe that every woman is, if if she's not beautiful, something about her is beautiful. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's always about, you know, what do you love about yourself? That's what I always ask them. Like, what do you love about who you are? Is it your lips, your hands, your butt? And then a lot of times they'll tell me about what their significant other thinks. And I'm like, no, what do you think mm. is beautiful? I don't right, care right. about like what you come to with whatever. You. Like, we'll put in a picture of your ass if he is an ass man <laughs> or she is an ass woman. But right. what do you think about yourself? And that's hard because a lot of women don't know. Mm. And that's scary. Scary. Mm. Now, hold on. So this might be a weird-ass question. Mm-hmm. All right, so hold on. Is there, like, an, what's the official, did we talk about the, the official definition of boudoir? It has many okay. because, of course, it means bedroom. It's a French term, okay. so of course, it means your bedroom. Your boudoir is your bedroom. Okay. Um, hon, but hon, hon. what? The I did every French thing I say hon, 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 because it's a random ass French thing I do, and I don't even know if that's really French. But when I'm in Montreal, I order everything and I say hon, hon. And what did they do? They look at me weird. Okay, no, I'm just. Okay. Ch- I was just gonna ask. But I, I don't, don't know. But that's the thing. I don't care. I'm weird. Uh, okay, I was. I mean, a. Alright, so you so boudoir means bedroom. That's the that's one of the terms, but okay. um, it's a style of photography that captures women, like I said, in a sensual way, a classy, um, 
some people I do I do have some people who are like it's porn. I'm like, no, it's not porn. Right, right. It's not porn. Like right. that's there are some people who um like I'm in a group that is called Do More Photographers and they do have some who they'll do couple sessions. Mm-hmm. Now couple sessions just by nature of you have a couple who's taking pictures together, it can get into that space, mm-hmm. but you just have to set those boundaries. Now, if that's mm-hmm. something that you want to do, like I know there are some photographers who will allow people to have sex and then they'll take the pictures, but you don't see the intercourse. You just see like their the face. Yeah. Or, right. or you'll see their face <clears throat> or their hands and um, things like that, but you're not going to see the actual act itself. Yeah. All right, so get in. So that's a good leeway into get into <laughs> what you consider the difference between. Sex and, sex and intimacy. And intimacy. Okay. Let's let's hear that from the our professional. Uh, I'm not. I'm just saying what sister. I said when I, I say it. When I, I say it. Say what you say. All right. Do what you do. So, sex is more about the physical aspect of you, and it could be you're not like if we're talking about in romantic terms, mm-hmm. you are with someone, and it's just about intercourse. Like that's it. It's nothing. It's about sexual gratification. And, of course, in heterosexual relationships, usually we know one party is getting the sexual gratification and the other one is usually not when it comes to men and women. We yeah. had that conversation, go. so I'm going to move on. Hold on. Did you did you listen to my... If anybody who's listening, y'all heard my episode about men faking it too? Y'all go check that out because it goes completely against what you're talking that about. That was shady. But it's facts. I don't want to say it. I just want to say it, but go ahead. Go I ahead. sent you the facts. Okay, but go ahead. Okay, Continue so we're going to keep going because you're trying to act with, like you didn't have facts. Continue with this myth. Facts. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I digress. So men be getting there and women don't get there. Go ahead. Facts. So with that, leading into that. <laughs> so intimacy is on a totally different <clears throat> level because intimacy is something where you have to know a person on a deeper level like sex you just can pick up somebody at the bar y'all go have sex and that's it and then that's it like you leave but intimacy is there are different types of intimacy so you have like emotional intimacy which is you have a person where you're sharing like deep hidden things about yourself you might be sharing you know your childhood and why you love the way you love so that's something that is emotional. So it doesn't have to be romantic. It could mm-hmm. be, you know, with your family or with your friends. Mm-hmm. And then you have intellectual intimacy, which is, you know, sharing of ideas, which is important. Mm-hmm. And then you have um, spiritual intimacy, which is sharing, you know, when you, if you go to church, if you go to mosque, if you go to um, temple, whatever, you're sharing those beliefs that you have about just the spiritual world or God or religion. Mm -hmm. And then you have the physical, which does involve sex, but it's about affection. Like, um, for instance, touch. Like, touch is huge. A lot of people don't understand how just touching someone can calm them down, especially when you have that emotional um, need, especially even for babies. Like, babies have to be touched in order to thrive. And people don't understand, like, touch is big. So that's affection. And then... um, and the pressure was how, how much you touch somebody, the pressure points. Yes, like, that's true. How much you can't just be grabbing motherfuckers all the time. I mean, some people like this. I mean, that's so, what I'm saying. I mean, you yeah. Didn't, that's part of, like, I think you're talking about the intimacy. So mm-hmm. You didn't know what your partner likes or stuff like that because you can't. Everybody don't like to be grabbed. Some people do. Yeah. Some people don't like touching you or grabbing their wrist, but they like you grabbing their neck. Uh, you know, you never know. It was two extremes, but yes. <laughs> That's what you do. You gotta go with the extreme. Yes, but that is true. Man, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And then you know, with that, the the last one, which I think is one that's the most important, is self intimacy. Like people don't. I mean, yes, you can talk about masturbation, but that's a part of it. Mm-hmm. But just understanding, you know, what your needs are, what your wants are. Um, when it comes to even masturbation, which is important, because if you can't please yourself, you can't expect someone else to please you. So if you don't know what you need what you like yeah you right. can't expect someone else to do what you want and that's why you have that miscommunication so for Factory. yeah because you don't know now hold on so now mm-hmm. with that yes how do you feel that ties into the whole original point you made which is women be don't be getting there and men get there so is it how do you feel that people need to go ahead and communicate what they need 
to the partner? Do you feel the man needs to always ask or the woman needs to be up to communicate that all the time? Be like, all right, look, before we do this, here go my, here go my list of what I like <laughs> based on my personal intimacy, my self-intimacy that I need you to do okay. and do it right. Or do you think the man needs to take the lead on that and ask the questions and how do you feel about that? No, I don't. Um, I, it's important. That's why I say intimacy is important because when someone feels secure in you and your relationship, mm -hmm. whatever you ask of them, they will more than likely do. Okay. Like right off the bat. Because okay. they know that they're safe with you. So if you were to do something that they didn't like, they could tell you immediately and you would not take it as an offense. And you would just say, okay, well, you know, you did this and I didn't like this. And then you could have a conversation. Because people always talk about communication, but they don't understand that effective communication. They just say, oh, we talk, but oh, that right, don't right. mean shit. See, you, like, you be knowing. I be knowing. And no matter what they tell me knowing. about you on the street, <laughs> you do be knowing some shit, you know what I'm saying? I, I, be, I be knowing a little bit, you know, bit. a little that's bit. A, I like that point right there. Bit. But it's true. Like, a lot of people don't, they don't understand that, if you are in a relationship, you have to have conversations. Like, you should be having a conversation about sex before you have sex. Mm. And if you don't, that's where lines get crossed, and that's where people get their feelings hurt, and that's where people, you know, don't want things to happen. And you might not know it because you haven't had that conversation right. before you took that step. Right. So that's why it's important to have those conversations before you get into the bedroom. To know how a person likes to be touched. To know how a person feels if you say certain things. Like, there could be trauma, and you don't know, yeah. and you say some shit, and they haul off and knock you out. Like, you don't yeah. know. Yeah. That happened on one of them shows recently. It was that one of them shows. I haven't even, I don't watch TV. One of them. You don't watch TV? Only when I go home to Baltimore is when I usually watch See, y'all auntie people be real <laughs> dramatic. I'm never like, don't, they don't. Watch a TV. What is it? What do you call this thing? What do you call this? The shadiest shit. What do you call this motion tube? Motion tube. I don't watch it. Y'all, y'all, y'all people that don't watch TV, y'all feel like I feel like y'all be judging other people. Like y'all some kind of entertainment elitist. No, I say I watch TV when I go home. I said that. I didn't say that I watch it like that. But I like I watch certain shows. Okay. Like, but not. But yeah, there was some TV. show one of these, one of them shows that's on. It's not. This is. I think it's called like. Not this is love. Is it new? Love. Yeah, it's one of the new shows. Um, I don't know. Is it um, lo love is or who love, love is? Yeah. That show is so like. Yeah, love. So love is that happened recently. Um, I don't. That Nuri, show has so many problems. Yeah, Nuri freaked out because mm. she had some kind of past that you know that just came out of nowhere mm -hmm. that she never told the guy about. So that that was, and they hadn't discussed it. And she was hiding mm -hmm. it. And blah, 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 blah. Well, first of all, that show, <laughs> like, they love each other in three days. So that makes sense that he wouldn't know. Of course. So, but that show has so many, <laughs> like, I don't. I just at first I started watching it, and I was like, oh, okay, this is nice, and then and then I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, I can't. <laughs> I feel like I did that too. Like, I watched. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Mm-hmm. And then, like, as it goes, I'm like, hmm, seems that something is off. It and is. I think that, I mean, we on a whole tangent, but the, the, the I think that the guy, uh -huh. what the hell is it? I can't remember his name. Um, oh, shit. I was going to say Kobe, that's long. Yes. Yas no, is it? Yassi. Yassi, I think it's Yassi. Okay, we're gonna, I don't know. We're, we're going to go with that. that. The name Yassi is name. So, I feel like he's, like, he's very complex, but not really complex. Like, he's, like. A fake woke. He's, like, a fake woke dude. Okay. A hotel. And, uh, yeah, he's like a faux tip. I call him a faux tip. Faux tip. <laughs> okay. He's like a faux tip, and then he's very like dramatic. He's a, he's yes. very extreme. Like every time yes. he do something, is very to the to the extreme. Like mm -hmm. he loves to the extreme. He curses out. He goes to the extreme. Like if something wrong, he wilds out. And like mm -hmm. the last episode, it was it showed that a lot. And it was just it's just a weird. I like it. I I like it. I follow it because now I'm engaged to it. Like, yeah. I'm, in, I'm into it. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of... Mm. And then I found out that the two little old people that they the flash back... The two little old people? So, the, not two little old. <laughs> the two people that they, that they flash back to is them, but yeah. it's not them. 
Wait, what? It's two actors. Oh, really? Yes, I was pissed. Oh, shit, I didn't know that. So I thought that it was the actual people, that they just I didn't were know filming that. them talking on the couch or whatever. I thought that. And then come to find out, those two people oh, that wow. they flashed back to are still fucking actors. Cause I was like, I didn't know that. Cause, oh. I, Cause my thing, I'm like, yo, they found a perfect match. For That's what I thought too. The younger oh, version. Of I didn't mind know that. Yeah. <laughs> See, you just told me something. Yeah, I, I put a lot of people onto that. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, wow. the, so the writers, the writer of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, clearly, everybody knows the writer of the show yeah. is who the show is about, but it's not them two people you see. I did not know that. And I was mad. And then I lost I lost a little bit of interest because I was like, oh, that's bullshit. Uh, now they they paying two extra actors for no reason. I mean, I ain't mad because black people working. That's true. That's true. All right, I now, mean, now we're going to get off that tangent. Though. Okay, go ahead. So one thing you, you mentioned, too, is um, you mentioned... A lot of stuff. When, <laughs> when, they, when, when, you're, when the clients are there, you said if they come and they have... They have a book that they leave with, mm-hmm. or that you develop. So, what is that book, or like? So my albums. I mean, yeah, the album. Like, so how is that? Is that standard, or is that something they could choose to do, or like, how does that work? Well, what I have is um, I have a la carte, which is they can buy um, digitals, um, something called a folio, which is a picture that's like matted. Um, and then I have albums and then um, what I call wall art, which is a metallic print. So I, they can buy that a la carte or they can actually do a collection. And the collection will have um, some type of digital with it. Um, some have albums, some have, they all have wall art, a 16 by 24 wall art, which is um, a little bit bigger than a poster because a poster I think is 16 by 20. Okay. So, but it just depends on what their budget is and mm-hmm. what they actually want. Okay. So my albums are, they are big. Like they're 10 by 10, um, 12 by 12, and then the smallest one I go is 8 by 10, but usually um, 8 by 8. Usually people get the 10 by 10 because it's, it's just right. The perfect size. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And do they have different, like is it a standard kind of layout or can you customize the layout? Or, like is it, do it look like some kind of old like, <laughs> fancy thing or is it like what kind of format is it, is it leather because you were talking about my leather seating arrangements that we got in here like she you're said she said bring up yeah you stuff, know like you're talking, she, like, you're talking a lot of shit so i was like what's wrong with leather that see you she didn't said, she said, set it up right she said man oh what you say you said oh, you bachelors know, always oh, you have leather. leather like they always have leather couches and i never understand it because when it gets hot like your ass gets stuck to leather that's why you don't never let it get hot that eight, that eight back right. popping. Pepco take all my money. Give a ring. Cause it's always cool out here. I hate being hot. Okay, so but anyway, I do that. yes. So yeah, so but, is um, it like a? Is it bind it up? Like I'm coming. It's a professional. You got it on. I have a video. I can show you. I have okay. a video of um, two videos of me unboxing two. Oh, okay. So it is. It's leather. It's premium leather. Cause it's an investment. So it's a yeah. premium leather. Yeah. Um, and what I do when they come in. So once they take their pictures. Um, and I fix everything up, I bring them back in, and then that's when we design their albums together. Uh-huh. So we actually sit and we look at their pictures. I have a T, I do have a TV, I just don't watch TV. So you have we a monitor. sit, yes, I have a TV. <laughs> so I um, actually put the pictures on the TV so they can see themselves like in high depth. So they see themselves it's like 1080p, the, yeah, 4K. And, they, and they see themselves. And then we go over, depending on what size album they are getting, mm-hmm. we go over it and then they actually will sit and put the out. So it's like a two hour process where we sit. If they get an album, we and put it together. Really, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, so that's like really, in, that, now that's intimate in itself. Yeah, and, it's and customizing. They're customizing their own mm-hmm. pictures, the the, port, the port, I mean, uh, the, the album, the, album mm-hmm. the presentation, all that stuff is going to be personalized to them. Yeah. And they actually built it with you. It wasn't your call. No, it's them. And so that's, I think that's another good thing about it that, like, you're making it all about them, right? It you is. Could, you could easily just go, nah, I got these three standard joints that I do, and here it is. Here's the format no. I wanted in. Here's your best pictures. Here's your here's the progression. Mm-hmm. But letting them come in, touch it, feel it, do yeah. it, all that stuff is, is awesome. Because, it, I mean, I do limit the choices mm-hmm. because when you have too many choices, oh, yeah. it takes... Too much of you getting, you know, it's just too much, and then that loses the sale, which I don't ever want to do. Mm. So, 
you I always make sure that they know you know these are your three options and usually people get the 10 by 10 because that's you know the one that they are most comfortable with mm -hmm. and then I try to give them a collection because you get more for your money with the collection mm -hmm. and then from there um, it's just like for me I wanted to be since you're, it's an investment in yourself I want it to be something that you are happy with like if you aren't happy with it then that's a problem because you can't return it so <laughs> so <laughs> you, can't, you, can't no, you can't so it needs to be something that you are in love with right yeah so and I wouldn't want to spend that much money and not love it true true mm -hmm. now one last thing I'll ask you you know this, this this podcast is called sex travel sports yes food um, in this episode we focus a lot on the sex mm -hmm. now one thing I saw uh, or that maybe we talked about this but you do go out and travel I do. to other places to to do shoots I do. elsewhere. I do. So, like, what's one of the coolest places you've ever done a shoot? Well, I just went to Arizona, which was nice. Mm -hmm. um, I am... One of the places that I know I'm going to be going is Essence Fest. I was just working that out. Um, and I was supposed to be going to Miami, but I think I'm going to scrap that. Um, you going to scrap Miami? I don't been to Miami like three... Two, yeah. I've been to two, Miami twice in the past book. And see... I, I don't. I, I think Miami is an overrated destination I do as well. for vacation. Yes. But I've actually gone down there for like specific purposes. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I, you can't beat the weather. In you Miami. can't. You cannot. Even though it'd be oppressively hot in Miami. Yeah, I mean, Florida. I've gone with my sisters a number of times, and I've I've always gone with my sisters when we go down. But <laughs> I I don't know. I'm just I'm not really in. Like I have to go. One of the places that I actually really, really loved was D.C., which is um, the Kempton um, Rouge, the Hotel Rouge. I've never heard of it. I'm not, not that fancy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> the Kempton, they are all like boutique hotels. Okay. So each hotel in D.C., they have like five or, I don't know, it's like between five and seven in D.C. and DuPont Circle. And all right. they all have a different theme. So the Rouge is all about like sex, like it's mm. red leather, um, like big huge headboards, um, oh, glass yeah. shower, like it's everything hey, is nice. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> that was an amazing place to shoot in because right. the decor was just amazing. Hmm. Okay, so the Dupont Kipton joints. Kim, they have them um, all over, but yeah, I know. I think yeah. Kipton is part of another hotel chain. It's like, think remember Marriott. It's, I one don't of, even know. it's one of the big ones. On yeah, the I think Kipton. they. Yeah, but they are. I love them. Huh. Yeah. Now, did, when you was in Arizona, what part of Arizona did you go to? I went to Phoenix, and then I did go to the Grand Canyon. Oh yeah. Yes. You did. Did you do the flyover? Hell no. <laughs> yeah, I'm scared of heights. I wasn't scared of heights, but we could see um, the fire in California, and so there was a couple because I went by myself. So sure. there was a couple who. Would, who did that and then they had to ground them because they the fire and I was like so y'all just spent like five hundred dollars and you couldn't even see the shit you wanted to see because of the fire I would be pissed too I was like did y'all get some money back but I didn't say nothing so I just left it alone that company should have told them look dog y'all gonna be able to fly but you ain't gonna be able to see I mean <laughs> but we <laughs> could see them. it that's what I didn't say like we could see it as we were driving there and I'm talking about they should have told them they couldn't they weren't gonna be able to see what they wanted listen I'd have called that right there when, right. as soon as I could see the smoke I'd have been like no I'm not doing that shit <laughs> but you know it is what it is but that was an experience that mm -hmm. hotel was nice that was the um, foundry and it was beautiful because they had art from all different people that live in Arizona so oh, cool. when you first walk in, you see a big picture of, um, shit, what's the 70s? I forget his name. Um, but it was like a naked man. I can't remember his name for the life of me. Mm -hmm. And that's the picture that you, when you first walk in, that's what you see. A mm -hmm. naked man with a hat on his penis and he has a blonde wig on. Mm -hmm. And that is, going on. that's the first thing you see. <laughs> like, walking into, and I was like, oh, okay, this, this is going to be interesting. Like, right, right. But it's a very industrial, um, like hotel but it's really it's nice I loved it mm. so I would go back because it was it was a place like I wanted to shoot in the shower but I didn't have enough time mm. 
because the shower was open, it had no um, curtains or anything, it was just open, and then it had a oh, mirror, so I was going to shoot in there, but time ran away from me. I love big open, open, I don't even know what they call it, like open format is around me, mm-hmm. whatever, I love big showers like that, where it's like, it'd be like as big as this room. And no, that's what it, it was, literally, it's, it's it was, awesome. it was this size, and it was very, very nice, yeah. so. I stayed in this, this, uh, this house in Cabo, and mm-hmm. it had this, cre- I, the next time I buy a house, Mm-hmm. I'm getting this shower that I've stayed when I, at this Cabo house. I'm getting it put because it was that. Oh, it was literally bigger than this room. Really? This the shower with well, the shower and the the hot tub combo. Like, oh. I was like yo, this shit is nice. I mean, the shower like we was over here in the shower, uh-huh. and then over there was the tub. But like all of this was just that, that area. Is, that's nice. I was like, man, this is crazy. That is nice. But yeah, so let's we gonna wrap this up. Um, let's get your. Mm-hmm website or your contact info your ig facebook okay because you just you be on live i've been on i tried to make a couple of live but you know i be at work you know because you be out here you're living your best life yeah um so yeah let's get your contact info where can people find you to go check out your work mm-hmm. book you yeah all that good stuff right so my i everything is oh and then experience so my ig is oh experience my website is the same oh experience.com uh facebook is pretty much the same i think actually that's olisha at i think it's like olisha by old experience whatever but if you look for my name i don't fucking know but if you look for my name uh so y'all just go oh experience oh experience but if you go on ig right Everything it's is a drop down there. menu, so okay. you can see okay. all of my stuff is right there. I don't know who's my own job. People don't know y'all favorite. But I'm the like, shade. I'm messing with you. Like the shade is serious. That's why I do all my cousin cornbread that's on everything because I couldn't figure it out. But, but I it might not be old experience. I we go make sure y'all go check out old experience with Miss Olisha and uh, get y'all boo wah. Yeah. That was that was better. Y'all like that? that was better. Yeah. That was better. Yeah. That was better. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go get y'all boudoir photo shoot schedule. Check out her work. I checked out a couple of joints and they were very nice. Thank you. Oh, and one thing that well, you told me that was a kind of a caveat is that you enjoy shooting. What? Couples? BBW. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. So I thought that was very interesting because recently, mm-hmm. just a side note, you know, I've been in a couple of different situations, a couple of different groups about body positive imagery. Mm-hmm. And me being a big dude, I always tell them, I always have had a terrible body image. Mm-hmm. And people are always like, why do you think this, why do you think that? It's because you get joned on and shit when you're younger or, or even when you're older. That's true. Or people just be like, yo, big people are terrible for whatever reason. Or like yeah, they, I can see that. they talk about how fat this and fat that and yes. da, da, da. so you know all that kind of stuff so I thought that was cool when when I when we were talking about it briefly you mentioned that and some of the initial samples that you showed me mm-hmm. were of uh, the thick girls thick, I love like I don't I, it's gonna sound bad when I say this but <laughs> I love shooting larger women like I love shooting women who have curves Mm -hmm. because it's so much easier for me one to pose Mm -hmm. them Mm -hmm. i mean i can pose anybody but it's to me it's i just love it like i i mean i love all shapes and sizes but i definitely love like i don't see nothing wrong like rihanna said if you got a butt you gonna have a gut so (laughs) like come on unless you go buy a butt and that's a whole nother situation that's not even for this podcast i I always say that too i'll be like man look john I, me and my boys always mm-hmm. always say, you know, you know, in a lot of our guys groups, mm-hmm. our, little call, our little Instagram groups or WhatsApp, all we do is sit around, ask pictures, whatever. Ain't no secret. But, you know, some of us, we be like, yo, man, we getting tired of seeing all these fake joints. Can we know? True. Like, these people don't exist. It's not real life. It's not real life. Like, these jokes don't exist nowhere but on Instagram because they it's got to Photoshop it. Or these some joints that do had all the surgery in the world. I always said, I'm going to go to Dr. Miami myself. For what? And then I'm going to start selling flat tummy tea. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> <laughs> the flat tummy tea joint is popping. I'm going to start selling flat tummy tea. You know, tea. that shit is nothing, yeah. but it all it makes you do is shit. Hey, look, I don't care. As long as y'all sign up as cornbread, because the cornbread is referral link. You know what I'm talking oh, about? 
I can't. Like I'm all that shit does is make you leave water. Oh my god. Bodies by bread. That's gonna be my. Uh, <laughs> Didn't they just get in trouble? I know they did at one point. Okay, but so I think straight now. you sure? I think. I don't, mm, all right, go. We well, gonna figure it out, but you know, but thank you, uh, Miss Alicia. The O experience, or not, it's not the O experience, no, just O it's experience, just experience. O H experience. Yes, my initials on Instagram. Uh, just go on Instagram, cause <laughs> just go on there and find her, cause that's where you're gonna link everything else. From. Yes. Like I said, I appreciate her coming through for our boudoir. I thank you for having me. Experience and expertise. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. And as always, this is your favorite cousin, Cornbread. And don't forget, number one, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Number two, always make a plan or you'll work for somebody who has made a plan. And number three, like Miss Olisha is going over here. Don't drink and drive. You might spill some. Log out.